Hello and welcome dear professional students and learners to the another video on stratified sampling for process validation and continuous verification. It is also called as continued verification and this is a latter part of the validation. So this is part 3 and part 1 and 2 are available on the channel which discuss about the stratified sampling for process design and process qualification stage. So the validation has three steps mainly. First is validation by process design and process qualification of the batches. Then continued process verification and third will be process life cycle. So once the process is made in R&D and it is made final for uh, manufacturing plant or for scale up activities. So that means now the process design and qualification will start at the actual manufacturing site. So that is the stage one for process validation and it is known as process design and process qualification. Second is continued process verification and third one is the process life cycle. Now one by one we will see. First is process design. The commercial manufacturing process is defined during this stage based on the knowledge gained through development and scale up activities. So you have a research data available. You have scale up activities data available and you have the experience of research and scale up. So now the commercial manufacturing process is defined through the process design stage of process validation. Then comes to the process qualification. Now you have a design process in hand and now it is required to be qualified. So during this stage, the process design is evaluated to determine if the process is capable of reproducible at commercial manufacturing. So that design process should be reproducible. And then it goes to the third stage that is continued process verification. This is ongoing assurance. The ongoing assurance is gained during the routine production. So continued process verification involves routine production and it involves that the process remains in the state of control. So this is a brief introduction regarding the process validation. Now we will see the stratified sampling, how it is done in the continuous process verification stage. So in this stage, the entire compression run or capsule filling run is divided into 30 locations. You might be remembering that in the process qualification and design stage, 40 locations were taken. But here, 30 locations are taken. And these 30 locations are spread approximately equally across the batch including at the beginning and end of the run. Then, from the 30 locations, one doges unit is taken as a sample. So you will have 30 units. You will have 30 units out of these 30 locations. And you have to test 10 units out of these 30 units. So you will have 10 units assay values. Now, acceptance criteria. What is the acceptance criteria? All individual values within 75 to 125 percent and complies with the statistical test to provide an appropriate level of assurance to comply with USP 905 for total number of the assay results. This is number of assay results. So, 10 units. If assay value are within 
75 to 125 percent then the process is said to be well within the control and stratified sampling passes the process verification stage and if these 10 units are not passing at this stage 1 then you have to test other 20 remaining doses units out of these 30 10 we have tested here and this failed so we move to the another 20 units now stage 2 criteria all individual values within 75 to 125 percent and complies with the statistical test to provide an appropriate level of assurance to comply with the USP. So if it is passing the test will pass and stratified sampling will be said to be passing but if it fails then doses units and possibly the blend are not uniform. Process flow diagram for assessment of blend and content uniformity. Continued process verification stage 3 batches. So, the manufacturer decides what a statistical approach, sampling plan, acceptance criteria and level of confidence and coverage to use to provide assurance in passing USP. In particular example, which is for demonstration purpose only, uses a sampling plan where one unit is tested from 30 locations throughout the compression or filling process. Other example, other sample plants using different quantities of doses units may be used with justification. See, this is because the in-process doses unit data can also be used as surrogate test for both batch release, that is non-weight corrected data and blend uniformity. A system, systematic sampling plan should be used to identify the position of sampling locations and ensure samples are taken throughout the entire batch, including beginning and end of the run locations. So what is the meaning of this? That manufacturer decides what statistical approach, sampling plan, acceptance criteria and level of confidence and coverage can be taken. See, the additional sampling may be taken or may be justified based on the results. But these location should be well distributed throughout the process run. It should not be like that the initial samples are taken or middle samples are taken or end samples are taken. Because on the results of these 30 locations, the manufacturer is going to release the batch. Then coming to the stage B, stage 1, what we have seen in earlier slide that is going to be taken here in detail. So sample 1, in process doses unit from 30 location throughout the compression or filling process including beginning and end of run, 30 locations we have to take. Assay one doses unit from at least 10 out of 30 locations. Then 10 locations need to be identified in the sampling plan and are from across the entire batch including beginning and end and not just the random sample. Determine, the, determine if the data comply with the acceptance criteria for statistical approach, sample size and levels of confidence and coverage selected. All individual values should be within 75 to 105 percent. And this is non-weight corrected. Weight correction factor is not applied here. So this data is non-weight corrected. That means if your capsule filling or compression has weight variation that will be reflected here. If the results comply with the acceptance criteria blend and doses uniformity is demonstrated. If either of the above acceptance criteria are not met proceed to stage 2 testing and what this stage 2 Testing tells us that means test the remaining 20 units and this should be within 75 to 125 percent non weight corrected results. If results comply with the acceptance criteria, blend and doses unit uniformity is demonstrated 
and if not that means the blend is not uniform and the stratified sampling failed so now continued process verification stage 3a it is given standard deviations in the 3.1 to 5 percent so see always remember that this stratified sampling is dependent on the blend uniformity and content uniformity so these are interrelated terminologies what is the standard deviation of the blend uniformity and that should be taken forward for the stratified sampling so first is standard deviation in the 3.1 to 5 percent if product has blend standard deviation in the 3.1 to 5 percent of the target range and or it required stage 2 testing for the doses unit during process qualification that means additional samples may need to be analyzed during continued process verification so understand these things that in your process qualification if if the batch goes to stage 2 that means the process verification stage or continued process verification stage of the same product will need additional samples and that is obvious the number of doses unit that should be assayed depend on the magnitude of the risk associated with the process so if you identify that the process as per the process design stage is going to the process verification stage so the same process is there same message will be there sometimes and sometimes the batch size will increase so that variation will be carried forward to the process verification stage standard deviation in the range of 4 to 5 percent here now the standard deviation is increased from 3.1 to 5 if the product has standard deviation of the blend or doses units in the 4.5 to 5 percent of the target range greater number of doses units may be required to demonstrate adequacy of the powder mix and doses unit uniformity and perhaps comparable to stage 2 doses unit testing quantities so for this understanding i i am again requesting you to go to those two videos part 1 and part 2 so that you will understand this concept in very much detail then standard deviation in the range of 3.1 to 4 so this is a less standard deviation and it shows that your blend is uniform so for products with blend and or doses units standard deviation in the range of 3.1 to 4 stage 1 doses unit testing may suffice so see based on the blend uniformity standard deviation how your stratified sampling is going to happen then the number of sample tested could be reduced if the process ch changes are implemented that demonstrate an improvement in the blend and doses unit uniformity so if you have made something that the blend get uniform then sampling can be reduced testing may also be reduced after due diligence effort to improve the process still results in high but consistent and acceptable standard deviation for the blend and or doses unit data indicating that this is the best uniformity that the process can achieve so every process will have some uh, variation you cannot claim that or you cannot say that the research if it is done then the process will have very very less variation no that is intrinsic nature of that process and the composition and manufacturing uh, technology so the efforts can be taken to reduce the blend uniformity variation and based on that the effort can be taken to improve the process and standard deviation can be reduced but one point will be there where the 
Rest uniformity will be from that process. And above that uniformity, it is not practically possible to go. So that means, for example, if uh, in the process design stage, blend has a standard deviation of 4.5. So by taking some precautions, doing some efforts, uh, and studying the process in detail, you can take it to around 2. But it is not necessary that it will go to 0 or it will go to 1. So it is like that. Then coming to the process life cycle, one implement, one, one element of the continued process verification is to monitor process performance across the batches. So process life cycle involves the study of the process and its reproducibility. So process performance will be checked across the batches. Then standard deviations, acceptance values or other metrics for doses unit uniformity could be monitored across batches to detect any trend or shifts in the manufacturing process over the product's life cycle. See in the product life cycle some of the processes get improved. Some of the processes remain as such as in the design stage and some processes may become worst. So the pro product life cycle or process life cycle is the element of continued process verification which monitors the process performance across the batches. So suppose you have taken 100 batches and you have to take the process life cycle approach to study how the process is performing across the 100 batches. So I think this is completed for the process verification stage for stratified sampling. The references uh, I have taken from these guidelines from USFDA process validation general principles and practices and one article is there which is recommendations for the assessment of blend and contain uniformity. So you can go through these guidelines and uh, articles to get more in-depth understanding. Then these two videos are available on Pharma Learning In-Depth channel which is stratified sampling for process validation part 1 and part 2. These are also referred here. So watch these two videos for complete understanding of the stratified sampling. I hope you might have got a good understanding out of these videos. So in summary we have seen the stratified sampling for process validation and continued verification. See this process validation and stratified sampling is always a favorite topic of the interviews and it is always asked in the interviews for pharmaceutical industry thanks for watching the video please do like share and subscribe to pharma learning in depth channel thank you